the NBA. And that is what you get, my friend, watching the NBA. Excitement. It is crazy. I know a lot of people are complaining about the officiating. Well, yes. But the thing is, you got to understand, this is entertainment at the end of the day. There's somebody making sure things go a certain way. There is a product that somebody is looking for. Now, when I say somebody, it could be a collection of people, but there's got to be a hit. So somebody gives out the order or somebody pretty much nods. That's the way we're going. And this is what we're getting. Now, when you sit there, complain about rigging this, I don't think somebody sits there and say, you know, this is what's going to happen, but they're looking for a certain product and people are looking to sell. And this is a way to sell. Okay. But at the end of the day, I'm enjoying this because if we look at anything in the world, it's pretty much the same thing. As long as you're selling to people, you're going to push your product a certain way. So the officiating, that is a product off the product that they're trying to sell to you. But I do feel there's still a lot of integrity. I mean, I do feel like players go out there and they compete. I do feel like they're giving their all. And it's not given who is going to win. Like there are certain parameters that are set because they are looking for something. And that automatically is going to benefit certain teams or certain players. Because when I do sit there and I watch certain players drive to the basket and get bumped or pushed or scratched or pulled or knocked, whatever word you want to use, but then fouls are not called. And then certain players get calls. It makes me wonder. Now, it's not about the physicality, but it's about the type of call. I mean, a type, the type of foul, and hence, I guess, the type of call. I don't know if you understand what I'm getting at. Like, there's always something that they're looking at. They're zoning in to make sure this is eliminated or we get more of this. Now, certain players will benefit. And then certain players, which it's a call. I mean, in reality, almost every drive could be a call. Because there is some form of physicality. I mean, there, there is some kind of foul or bump or something that usually happens whenever somebody drives. So we could blow the whistle all the time. Or we could choose to swallow the whistle certain times and allow the game to flow. But then there's certain things that they crack down on. So hence, certain teams or certain players will benefit. Going back in time, you look at the Los Angeles Lakers have the most fouls, I bet you, in the NBA. When we look at the history of the NBA, what team has taken more free throws? I bet you it's, uh, it's the uh, Los Angeles Lakers. Because when we go back, we, could go, we can go back to 2002. Well, we all know that game, right? Against the uh, Blazers. We can go back and hit. I mean... Yeah, I don't really want to dive into that because you guys already know it. History is history. And then we come back to last season, this season. The Lakers tend to take more free throws than the other teams. Now, you could say it is rigged. You could say it's this. No, there is a form of physicality that they do play, though. But at the very same time, it is the Lakers, the most popular franchise and then right now, it's the Golden State Warriors that comes next. But the Golden State Warriors do not get that many free throws. Now, sometimes I, you know, think, could that be the case? No, there's got to be something else. And what that something else is right now, I really don't know. But I'm still loving this product. I'm enjoying it. It's very entertaining. And I can't get enough of it. So enough of that. Let's jump to the Lakers, the Warriors, and the Phoenix Suns. I am watching those teams very closely. Yes, no LeBron, quite okay. We'll take care of business. And that's what Davis did, took care of business. They're rolling right now. They're still in the play-in. But like I said, these teams have those special players. These teams have experience. These teams know how to take it to that next level. These teams are comfortable when things go down. Hence, we're seeing what we're seeing. The Warriors are also rolling right now, but the last game they played against the Utah Jazz, yes, they won two games in a row, two games in a row against the Utah Jazz. They won against the Utah Jazz and then lost against the Clippers, which they should have won, but they blew up 
in the fourth quarter. They played the fourth quarter kind of like the way they played this whole season, if you ask me, allowed so many points. I think it's the second highest this season in terms of allowing how many points per quarter. That's how bad it was. And then playing against the Utah Jazz, the first quarter, pretty much the same thing. Allowed a lot of points. And then at the very end of the game, again, the same thing again. But we are seeing that defense. We are seeing the Warriors take care of the ball more. We are seeing the Warriors run a lot more right now because of their defense. Now, we're seeing certain players, like, for instance, right now, Andrew Wiggins, he is knocking down shots, especially the three ball, really, really well. All right, so the Warriors are doing their thing, like I said. And the Phoenix Suns, the Phoenix Suns are also on a tear. They're playing really well right now. It's almost kind of like they got their thing together right now. But I still do feel like they need a point guard because they are one of the worst, if not the worst, team in the fourth quarter, the Phoenix Suns. Yes, the opposite of the Clippers. The Clippers are actually terrible in the first quarter and really good in the fourth quarter. We saw the Clippers do just that against the Warriors. They didn't start all that great, but in the fourth quarter, ah, they started knocking those threes down. And they are pretty much the best uh, three-point shooting team right now in the league. And they showed us exactly that against the Warriors. Now the Phoenix struggle in the fourth quarter. Now I would I would think I would think it's pretty much not really knowing who is the guy or still trying to figure that out. Some people would say it's because they lack a true point guard, you know, setting everybody up. That is true. But I really do feel like once you establish who the guy is, it will make a lot more sense. Those three guys tearing ish up right now but Bradley Bill might be out again that's concerning but I'm still not worried because they do have KD Kevin Durant like I said those three guys it is a problem going against them we see the Warriors the Warriors have been playing really great lately but certain things that tend to creep up every now and then we saw them play against the LA Clippers they played great defense they played great in the, four, in, in the first quarter. Second quarter, they tied up. Third quarter, they won it. Fourth quarter, imploded. Their defense kind of disappeared. And they started fouling a lot. And uh, the Clippers got to the free throw, free throw line a lot and just punished them, set their defense, and then kept attacking them left and right. Now, these are some of the things that killed the Warriors a little earlier and with the turnovers and everything. But... All in all, the Warriors have been playing really great. Now, the question that I want to ask you is this. Do you think there's a team that wants to see the Warriors in the playoffs right now? Even though we're seeing that, it's just because a lot of people are disappointed with the Warriors because we expect so much from the Warriors. And the way they're playing, I mean, we just saw them play against the Utah Jazz in the fourth quarter. They were up and then almost squandered that lead completely to lose that game. They won by one point. But could this be that point where things turn around and start working for them? Because we saw a lot of games end up the same way. And then they lost the game because they've lost a lot of games by one point. They've lost a lot of games in overtime. Crunch time. They've had so many opportunities in the crunch time. Hence, right now, Stephen Curry leads the league in crunch time, at points in crunch time, because he's had so many opportunities. Now, we could say that is great, but hey, he's had so many opportunities. No any other team has been in those situations like the Warriors. So he's had so much opportunity. And he's shining. Yeah, he's made the most threes right now in crunch moments because he's had so much opportunity. Now, I'm not trying to take anything away from Stephen Curry, but that's what I'm saying. The Warriors have been there. And they've lost a lot of games, but won some. Could this be the turning point? Them, because pff, I'm talking about them playing against the Utah Jazz. They almost lost that game. Sometimes that's, that's all you need is luck. Now, Pajemski, I mean, we could talk about what really happened to the point where Sexton was wide open to take that three. But I'm not going to dive into that. They did so many things right, but then they still have certain issues that keep creeping up and 
that's why things happen the way they do at the very end. That's why they in those crunch moments. It's not like the Warriors have sucked throughout the whole season. I mean, they've been pretty good, but then there's certain times during the course of the game where just certain things happen. And hence why they are in a situation they're in right now. They're a 500 team. They're one game above 500. But the question is, does a team want to see the Warriors in the playoffs? Like right now, I will still put my money on the Warriors. I will put my money on the Warriors. Same thing with the Lakers. I will put my money on the Lakers. Honestly, I will put my money on the Lakers in the playoffs. In the playoffs, I will put my money with the Lakers. The Phoenix Suns. The Phoenix Suns, kind of tricky, kind of tricky. And right now, they are the best team out of those three. You know, they got the best record. And then it's the Lakers, and then it's the Warriors. But then in the playoffs, I will put them last. Um, I'll put them last. That will be the worst out of those three. Because they're still trying to find themselves until now. But as long as they got KD, I have faith in them. I have faith in them. Is there a team that wants to face any one of those three teams right now? Let's say it ended right now and the playoffs are here. Do you think OKC wants to play any one of those teams? Do you think Minnesota wants to play any one of those teams? Of course they'll say yes, but do they really want to play any one of those three teams? I don't know. You tell me. Write a comment.